It's the Blues Rock Show with Pete Francis and Willie Witten. Welcome to the Blues Rock Show. Pete Francis alongside Willie Witten. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss an episode of the Blues Rock Show. All right, Willie, we have a great topic to lead off our show this week. Greta Van Fleet is going to be having a world tour in 2022. And guess who's opening for them in North America, Willie? Rival Sons. And this is huge news because if you look at current rock bands today, this is about as big of a pairing as you can get. Greta Van Fleet obviously has cultivated a huge audience. Rival Sons has been putting out some of the best rock music over the past decade. Willie, what do you think of this pairing? Uh, first and foremost, I love the pairing. It's essentially a two for one for anyone who gets that ticket. You can't argue with that. I think what's going to maybe irk a few followers, a few rock fans, is that Rival Sons is taking the undercard. Greta Van Fleet is getting the top of the met knee. I don't know why they did that, but I'm pretty sure I have an idea. And I just think that it's in North America. Greta Van Fleet's going to sell more tickets. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I mean, certainly I think that Rival Sons have been around longer. They could have gone off on their own tour and been headliners. So they obviously have opted into this. They have agreed to this. So they, in a way, are okay. Now, whether they're using it as a way to further their popularity, because more people have heard of Greta Van Fleet than Rival Sons, maybe that's why they're doing it. I don't know if it's right or wrong. I could see some rock fans finding that to be improper or disrespectful. But at the end of the day, Pete, there is a business side to music. And if the promoters, if the venues, if the heads that be think that having Greta Van Fleet up there first is going to make more money, that's probably what they're going to do. And at the end of the day, it might be best for both bands. What do you think? Am I being too kind to Greta Van Fleet as I usually am? Or do you think? Well, ultimately, Willie, I think this is going to be a good thing for both bands. Now, we know what the argument against Greta Van Fleet is. There is a sure. portion of the audience out there that says, hey, this is a Led Zeppelin knockoff. They're Zeppelin clones. They're not doing anything original, but here's the deal. In just a couple of years, these guys are in their young 20s. These guys have cultivated a huge, huge audience, and they've done it playing a style of music that, quite frankly, doesn't get a lot of mainstream exposure, doesn't really get exposed on the radio. But guess what? Greta Van Fleet, they have cultivated an audience. They are bringing this music to the mainstream. So... A lot of people, and we've discussed this before too, Willie, there is a bit of a jealousy factor there uh -huh. because they are so young and they've gotten such a big audience so fast. There are a lot of people out there, musicians included, especially musicians who are like, man, they're not that great. They're just ripping off Led Zeppelin. Well, they're doing what they do pretty well. Right. And they have built a very large audience. Rival Sons, they've been around for over a decade. They've been putting out as good of rock music is anyone over the past decade so a lot of people are like oh why would rival sons have to open up for greta van fleet they're so established they've been around for a really long time rival sons their last album was nominated for a grammy which is really nice exposure and rival sons while not super mainstream they have had some mainstream exposure yeah. i've watched you know nfl football games major league baseball games where you hear their music being played like as they're going into a commercial break and, and things like that so Rival Sons has had some decent exposure, but this is really going to blow up their exposure. I think so, too, Pete. I think that's the key. You use a phrase uh, that some people might say, why do they have to? I think the phrase have to is the wrong way to look at it. I think it's more of have agreed to. And I think they've agreed to it because I do think what you just said, this can slingshot them into the mainstream. I can pull 10 people off the street and ask them about Greta Van Fleet. And I can pull the same 10 people and pull them and ask them about Rival Sons. I guarantee you that I will never find a 10 person sampling where more people know of Rival Sons. I yeah. Mean, and here's the thing, Willie. This is not a competition. Right. They are not facing off with each other to see, oh, who's got more fans or who's the better band. It does not matter. Right. These two bands are going to help each other here. And because of that, everybody wins. We've mentioned this before, Willie. Greta Van Fleet is a gateway band. Yes. If they get more people listening to Rival Sons, that's a great thing. Because if more people listen to Rival Sons, a lot of other bands, a lot of bands that we cover here on Blues Rock Review that aren't mainstream, guess what? 
they might get into them because they started listening to Greta Van Fleet or Rival Sons. This helps everybody. And there is a portion of the crowd that says, oh, yeah, Greta Van Fleet, they're just Zeppelin knockoffs. And why would Rival Sons open for them? This is going to help Rival Sons tremendously. And this is not them going and playing in some theater or a small club. This is a full-fledged arena tour. Yeah. So Rival Sons is going to get in front of big time crowds, big audiences here, and a lot more people are going to know about Rival Sons because of this tour. And that's why Rival Sons is doing this. This is going to help them tremendously. It's going to help Greta Van Fleet too, because maybe some of those people who are Rival Sons fans and say, oh, we don't like Greta Van Fleet. Maybe they actually go to the show and go, you know what? I actually kind of like this band. So Willie, I think this is a win-win for everybody. It's definitely a win-win. And if we're talking about Zeppelin, because whenever we talk about Greta Van Fleet, no matter what degree you think they sort of take and draw from them, let's talk about a Beth Hart tribute album that is going to be coming up. It's Beth Hart going to be covering some Zeppelin classics. There's been so many different cover albums recently, maybe because of the pandemic. I don't know, Pete. Beth Hart covers Zepp. What do you think? Are you excited? Or are you thinking, ah, it's going to be great because it's because of Beth or great because of Zepp? Or is this just another covers album in a year that's already had so many? I think this is pretty cool, Willie. Obviously, covering Led Zeppelin is a very daunting task. Yeah. I don't think there's a ton of artists that go out there and be like, man, I want to cover Led Zeppelin because there's a lot of pressure that comes with that. That's not a, an easy thing to do. Beth Hart, though, she's got the voice, right? I mean, she's got a voice that is as good as anyone that's doing blues rock or rock music. I mean, her voice, she just belts. And one of the interesting things was through the pandemic, Beth Hart said one of the reasons why she's doing this now is because she said to cover Led Zeppelin to do these songs, you got to be kind of angry and pissed off. (laughs) And the pandemic kind of left her feeling in that mood in that way. So now she kind of felt this was the right time to to do this. And you know what? She's not doing the obscure covers either. Right. You've got Stairway to Heaven on this. You've got Cashmere. You've got Whole Lot of Love. So she's taking this head on. And so I think it's really cool, Willie. I mean, Beth Hart, phenomenal voice. And I think it's going to be a cool album. I take a look. Same thing. I wish, you know, once again, wishes. Everyone's going to have their own wishes. I wish she had maybe taken a, look, taken a look at Over the Hills and Far Away, I just because I like the changing of the voice that Robert Plant does. I think Beth Hart, once again, is one of the few people that would be able to do that. But I am sort of excited, not just for her decision to take on the challenge of doing what Robert Plant did in that range and that anger, as you said, but I also like a couple of choices here. I'm looking at these medleys. Dancing Days and When the Levee Breaks Medley. I don't know how that's going to flow together. So I'm looking forward to that because I have no idea how they're going to piece that together. And then also No Quarter, Babe, I'm Going to Leave You. Also something that's a little bit different. So I do appreciate that not only is she giving this the attempt, which most artists just know that they can't do. I do like the fact that she's taking a couple risks and are going to put in a couple of medleys that maybe some people might say, oh, that's a great combination Why haven't I heard this before? Once again, a gateway idea. I like the idea. I think it's going to be better than a lot of covers albums. But honestly, Pete, correct me if I'm wrong. The covers albums that have been coming out this year have been pretty darn good. They've been well thought and they've been done with heart and good quality technique, I think. So I hope this is just another one of those. I'm sure it will be. Yeah. And you mentioned this as a gateway. So many people know who Led Zeppelin is. Obviously, Beth Hart, she's got a pretty nice following. She's got a strong fan base at this point. But Led Zeppelin, I mean, their fan base is is just astronomical. So this could be an opportunity for Beth to get even more fans and and gain her fan base even bigger. So, yeah, yeah, I think it's a, a great idea for Beth, and I'm really looking forward to it. So speaking of artists who are pretty prolific, Willie, uh-huh. Smith Cotson, Adrian Smith and Richie Cotson have announced they're releasing a four track EP, Better Days, on November 26th. Now, this is interesting, Willie, because they already put out a full length album earlier right. this year. And now, before the year's even done, they're back for more. Are you looking forward to this? I am. I look forward to anything that Richie Cotson does. And that's not saying that 
everything I, that he does, I love. Um, all of it I find very high quality and excellent, but the idea of love. What I do get with Richie Kotzen is that you never know what you're going to get. He's very expansive. He does a lot of different things. He has a unlimited vocabulary of different musical styles. You pair him with Adrian Smith, who's, I think, a little bit of the harder grit. We listened to the album, the full length one. It was great. They've got another EP. I see no reason why this won't be at very least interesting and at best just an excellent EP, just a little nugget for fans to listen to. Moreover, I think that what, what it shows is that they are not done playing with each other. Yeah. And I think that's the big thing, Pete, that I look forward to is perhaps this is a four track deal and it signals the fact that this is a partnership that's going to continue. Pete, I don't know. Or do you think that maybe it's this is just the four songs that they didn't include on the album, touch them up a bit, and they are done? Which one do you think it is? I don't think that they're done with each other yet. And Richie Kotzen, he's done a lot of different projects, too, and a lot of different collaborations. Obviously, he's had his work with the winery dogs in recent years. So I kind of look at this as maybe this is another opportunity for Richie to do a couple albums with Adrian Smith. Yeah. And after listening to the first one that they did together earlier this year, at the time, I thought it was one of the best albums we would hear this year. And my opinion on that has not changed. I still think it's one of the best albums of 2021. So very exciting that they're releasing another album and Richie Kotzen. I mean, the guy is just so prolific. He puts out so much music last year. He put out 50 for 50, 50 yep. song album. He's just like, here you go, guys. I'm just going to put out 50 songs on an album. It's nuts because Richie Kotzen, he puts out an album pretty much like every year. Yes, he does. He's always got something going on. And it's just, it blows my mind how the guy just always is inspired. Yeah. He always has something to write about. He always is coming up with new material. And it's just, it really is mind blowing when you think the career that Richie Kotzen has had, how many songs he's written and released in his career. And the fact that he just does not slow down. He just keeps nope. putting out more and more music. It's really incredible, Willie. Yeah. He's, he's a great artist. He's a true musical talent. I think the parent is wonderful. I look forward to everything that we spoke about today. Sure, you can go ahead and try to find detractors. If you look hard enough, you can find a fault in anything. But I think the three parents we spoke about today, I think there's nothing but potential there and probably greatness. So that's all I got to say about that. Some may disagree. Let us know, right? Yeah. So what do you guys think? Are you excited for the new smith Cotson EP? What do you think about Beth Hart covering Led Zeppelin? And here's the, the one that's probably really going to get people talking. Greta Van Fleet and Rival Sons. What do you think of that pairing? Are you excited that they're going to be touring together? Let us know down in the comments section below. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. And please hit the like button. It really does help us out so more people see the video. It really helps with YouTube's algorithm. And we definitely appreciate you guys helping us out in that way. That's going to wrap up this week's edition of the Blues Rock Show. For Willie Witten, I'm Pete Francis. We'll see you next time.